Okay, so Stacey Almer is here and i um, happy to be recording tonight so that all can uh, attend where they need to attend and um, also share the video in future events. But I'm just going to give a little background of the use, how we started, why we started, and uh, where we're at. And then we're going to move into a discussion where um, we have some of our youths together can talk about their experiences and, well, back to why the youths. So uh, here we have uh, our vision and mission, which was created um, with the original group um, back in the fall of 2022. The youth mission is to lift the voices of Pelican Rapids, use of Pelican Rapids as Pelican, or excuse me, as valued members of the community. We want to see ourselves in the spaces, activities, and events in Pelican Rapids to continue amplifying the power of the youth voice to transform our future in our community. So that was a vision that was created by a group of young people in Pelican Rapids. Um, this is, so the why of starting, uh, part of my professional role is to look at the Minnesota student survey data. And in 2022, the um, survey results came out and I was looking at the results for not only our community, but communities across the, the region. And, and so Pelican Rapids isn't alone in what we identify our, our needs for our young people. And, um, but because uh, I'm from Pelican Rapids and my my children go to Pelican Rapids, um, and it was something that's within my sphere of influence and control. I focused on the data from the Minnesota Student Survey. Uh, oftentimes, too, that data gets put onto schools, and because that, that's, you know, students take the survey in the schools, and so the, it goes back to the schools and saying, well, this is your responsibility and you need to do something about this. But really, there's a lot of data within the student survey that says, hey, community, um, where's your part? And how can you step up and support our young people? So we're going to uh, pull out some data. Oh, thanks. Uh, can you go back, Eddie, on that slide? Thanks. Uh, one more. Uh, we're going to pull out some data from the Minnesota student survey data, a particular to Pelican Rapids, but again, not unique. Um, within our region and across the state of Minnesota. But this was a statement when the 2022 results were, uh, were published. And the Minnesota Student Survey is more than just a survey. It's a call to action for our communities to come together and prioritize the needs of our young people. By, investi by investing in coordinated budget and policy development, we can ensure that every child and young person in our communities has the support and opportunities they need to thrive. You can go to the next one. And so we're going to pull out three areas uh, that young people said, hey, pay attention to this community. And in those areas are enrichment activities. Uh, what do young people have to do outside of the regular school day? Uh, what are the quality of after school activities? So ensuring that programs outside of the school day um, are important for youth development. And then what are the perceptions of young people in um, how do adults feel or how do we feel adults care about us? Okay, so here's the data. Um, PR youth outside of the school day, and this is from the student survey um, of 2022, uh, actually very similar to also the 2019 uh, survey data. So 90% of our young people spend zero days in community clubs and activities. Uh, close to 90% students spend zero days at community spaces after school. And 90%, so here's a celebration, of young people say often and very often we feel safe outside of the regular school day. And that's a, that's a big celebration for our community. 60% uh, of our young people say that often and very often um, they spend time in trusting relationships with adults. Uh, this was the data that talked about the youth perceptions of caring adults. So 80% of our young people say that parents, adult relatives, and friends, so those close to them, um, that they feel care about them quite a bit, very much, so on the top end. The, the piece that goes to our community here is that 30% of our young people say that adults in, the, adults in the community care quite a bit or very much, which on the opposite end would say that 70% of our young people are saying, hmm, not sure how much our adults in our community care about us. 
so this is just a quick summary of what the youths have been up to in a timeline. So in 2022, we brought a group of young people together to start discussing, like, what do they want to see in their community? Uh, the fall of 22, we had some support from West Central Initiative and Bridge Makers to establish regular meetings that we've regularly held at the Pelican Library. Um, we decided on, they decided on short-term goals of having regular activities and planning regular activities, and then also um, some of the long-term work of getting a youth center put together. And so if we go from the last year, um, this is what the youths have been up to. They've presented to the city council. They've hosted a series of events, including a movie night, bowling, swimming, uh, pizza and games at the Pelican Pool Hall. Uh, we uh, did a visit to Cornerstone Youth Center in Frazee. Uh, they volunteered at the Friendship Festival, um, did the kids' crafts. Uh, we've had a couple speakers on leadership, uh, pumpkin carving, and they also went to, oh, they went to Valley Fair. Um, and they went to the cities for a youth day at the Capitol. And most recently, um, well, as a part of this pro process and after visiting the Frazee Cornerstone, um, the youth came back and processed that and like, what do we want to see in a youth center? Um, some of the things that came to the top of the list were a variety of games, foosball, air hockey, pool tables, video gaming area, a cozy hangout spot where we can watch movies and just hang out and a fully equipped kitchen where we can cook, we can enjoy food together, um, and just, yeah, have a place to eat and socialize. So most recently, at the end of December, we are celebrating the donation of a building um, from the Congregational Church. They have donated a space uh, for the use, um, which will be called the Bridge Center. Within this space, we will have the youth center in the basement. Uh, we will bring in a space for the senior center. Um, we have a group who has been working on a friendship kitchen, which is a commercial kitchen for community members to, uh, to rent some space and then be able to sell their goods uh, within the community. Um, and whether or not the food shelf comes into this space or it becomes an event center, we will also have um, that, that space occupied for community use. So the vision for this space is to be a physical and emotional space that brings uh, generations and cultures and community together all within one building. Uh, last in this, before we get to uh, just having a conversation, is um, how do we create these spaces for, for belonging inclusion, uh, excuse me, belonging and inclusion? And um, one of them is just establishing that welcoming environments where folks can connect and express themselves and just feel like it's a, a safe space. Um, coming alongside youth in youth leadership opportunities, um, their involvement in decision-making space, spaces and um, local events is really important. How do we amplify their voices? So fostering youth agency um, by bringing their voices into the community and then ensuring diverse representation, um, whether it's uh, leadership, uh, programming, decision-making spaces. So that is... Uh, a summary of where the youths have been and where we're going in our, our current, um, yeah, where we are currently. All right. Well, Stacey, I just want to first thank you so much for presenting this evening on Pelican Rapids Youth for us as a congregation, as a community organization to learn more so that we can be helped in understanding who you are, what you're doing, but how can we help you? Um, I joined this conversation this evening as a parent uh, with students in the Pelican Rapids School District. I also joined this conversation as a, pa as a pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church and a VFW chaplain. So I have different layers of being connected to this community. And it just always comes back to this question as we do introductions, but I'll just leave you with this theme for us to think about is how can we help you? So how can you help us help you as this organization gets up and running? Um, and also, at the same time, just be an element of support. But that is who I am, and I'll just pass this microphone around to make introductions so that we all know um, back at our church who people are and how you're involved in this organization. Alrighty, so I'm Ariana Gomez, and I have been here with the youths from the beginning, um, and I am a senior here at the high school. 
Hi, my name is Eddie Sanchez, otherwise known as Eduardo Sanchez in the community of Pelican Rapids. Um, I've been associated with the youth for a couple months now, and I was very dragged by um, the passion of just wanting to be associated with other youth members who were heavily um, just driven by wanting to make a bigger role and have the empowerment of having a voice and the saying things. My name is Jackie Porto, and I was in, connected to Stacy through, I think, Kate Wolver yeah. or Martinez. And I am now a board member of the Youth of PR, and I got involved because I am from Pelican, and I was a teenager here back in the day, and I'm also a parent, and I just... Everybody in the community has their strengths and um, their talents, their skill sets, and also their passions. And giving young people a voice is a huge passion of mine. And I just love the ideas that people come up with. And I think that a lot more should happen in Pelican for young people. And a lot of times, young people don't necessarily have their voices heard simply because you're not allowed to, like, you're not old enough to be on different boards and councils within the city. And I just feel super passionately about the fact that, like, just because you're young doesn't mean you can't be heard. Like, I want young people to be heard, and that's what brought me here. Thanks, Jackie. I, I will ditto all of that. Um, just a, as a parent, as a former graduate also of the community and um, going away for 20 years and coming back and in my role in education and um, looking at young, the importance and the value of young people's voices in decision-making spaces and, and then really just sitting back and, and listening. And if we sit back and listen and, and take a break from saying, but that isn't how we used to do it, but that isn't how we've done it. And, and we listen to, but what's it like now? Um, that, that's a, a big reason. And, and also like, what's it within our sphere of influence and control? And, and this was something uh, coming alongside young people in our community and building a coalition of adults to come together to say, hey, uh, we're behind you and we come alongside you also um, is the reason we are moving forward with getting a, a space for young people in the community. Well, thank you so much for each introducing yourselves. And one of the questions that I have as things get up and running for the youth here in Pelican Rapids is what are your hopes and dreams for your organization as it gets implemented? I feel like just to come together as a group and I mean, we say it all the time, but have that voice. But I mean, we're getting there. It's been, it's taken time, but we for sure have gotten there. Sorry, I'm not speaking into the mic very well. But um, yeah, just to come together and have a place to come together. Um, I want to be able to come back in 10, 20 plus years and know that us as the youths, we, we did a movement and we made something happen and just to inspire young people and just to leave a mark here and leave a big voice behind. Like Stacy, I also moved away after graduating high school and we just came back about a year and a half ago and we've lived in big cities and medium sized cities and there is so much going on for people of all ages, but especially for young people and younger kids and They've also had spaces, and one of the things in Pelican, it, and I think it's common in small towns, is that there are activities, there are groups, there are things for young people to do, but you kind of get shuffled around. You're like, in, it often feels like you're in somebody else's space, but in having a space just for young people to go and hang out whenever, like that's your space, and I think that's really important, and just... Um, being the piece that makes your guys' dreams happen, because my dream is to make this town somewhere you guys are really excited to live and to have things go on, have lots to do. And yeah, I just want to help make your guys' dreams happen. 
you know, I'll just say, uh, go back to the quote, your, the heart's greatest desire is to belong. And um, that's different for everyone. I, I, and yet, if, if we don't invest and think about what belonging and inclusion looks like for our young people, um, then what does the future of our community look like? And so that's, that's the vision that I've had all along is like creating that space of belonging and inclusion and coming alongside our young people. Another question that um, Alan and I both thought about is what have you learned in the process of putting this all together? Is there anything that steps out in your mind of, of something that you've learned that you didn't know before? Um, patience is a big thing. I'm not the best patient person myself, so um, patience and progress is definitely one of the biggest things, and it goes beyond just this project. Um, it's definitely a life lesson to be patient and wait for great things to happen, but yeah. One of the things that I've learned is, I can't say anything very specifically, but just the idea that there are so many more nuances and different ways of life or things that I might just say that can mean something different or be off-putting to people from different cultures or different experiences and just learning to be more open, ask tons of questions and be a little bit more careful or thoughtful with the things that I say and the things that I bring to discussions also, which is really cool because it the less I say, the more I learn about others, which is really fun. We don't know what we don't know. And just uh, taking the time to sit in spaces where we can learn and we can open up our, our own thinking and from our own experiences and, and, and sit and listen to and sit in others, uh, other folks' experiences, I think is something that I have just really learned. And um, you know, my kid said it to me the other day, like times are different <laughs> and they sure are. They sure are. Um, and I, I just, I put a lot of value in that, in the work that we do with our young people and times are different and, um, we need to just listen to the experiences that, that you all are having. Uh, one of the things that if, when I know is we don't know what we don't know, but just listening to each of you excitedly describe this organization and what's coming together. I've heard about this bridge center and that's where the youths will be housed and have an opportunity to meet and gather. And two themes came out in my head was, one was a, a place for video games and then another was for kitchens or a kitchen in a space to collectively cook together. Um, from your understanding, and this could be a question that either one or all of you answer is there's anything that we can donate in connection to the video game center or the kitchen are there any items that are needed um, that volunteers or people from our congregation and the rest of the community can donate to help make that a possibility that you're aware of i feel like as simple not as simple i mean some i would say food um I mean, there's, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors in some people's lives. Um, you know, someone could be struggling to make money to provide the food, et cetera. So I would say food would be one big one because, yeah, nutrition. <laughs> and as for the gaming wise, um, definitely old consoles. Okay. Old consoles, in my opinion, are more valuable than newer consoles nowadays just because it's nostalgic. And a lot of people, like myself, would enjoy that. Things we'll definitely need are furniture of some sort to accommodate our youth. But something that I am really interested in inquiring about with the community is skill sets and having people come in with their skill sets to teach something or to bring a new idea to the table and do some sort of like fun paint and learn class or a carpentry class or hey I want to learn more about photography and just providing some of those learning or interest related events also. Yes I, I, I love that and along with those skill sets is like as we look to renovating this space 
um, our, our first really big hurdle is raising the funds to remove the black mold in the basement so that we can we can begin, uh, you know, putting these these visions in place. Um, that's the first hurdle we have to we have to get through. But then it is, you know, what are what are your strengths and when it comes to construction and um remodeling and wiring and plumbing and uh th there's a lot of work to be done <laughs> but but it is an exciting vision and yeah i stand beside all of your ideas i was excited to hear that nostalgic um video game sets may be important because i may have one or two of those um, but and they're not being good use right now but maybe they could be in the future um, but that's wonderful to hear, whether it's food, whether it's kitchen items, whether it's consoles, um, even if it's skill sets coming into the Bridge Center to engage with youth and sharing that. Um, the biggest piece is just communicating that need. I don't know if, if there's a Facebook page or if there's a, a way that the Pelican Rapids youths are communicating um, where donations could, could go or could be helpful. But I would just invite you, um, for me as a community leader, for example, if you were to say food, um, that you needed some food for an event, um, if you let us know what it is, and it's not only our church, I know there's others that would be willing to help around, um, that's helpful information. Consoles, we're aware of that. Skill sets, um, when you mention, Stacy, and I won't sign up anybody from our congregation, but when you mention plumbing or um, construction or lighting or electrical, I know you're going to have to go through a vetted professional to do the mold clean out. Um, so that may be more of a financial giving realm. Um, but those skill sets, if there's a need, please you know, let us know, communicate that to us. Um, because I know that there's members of our congregation that are really interested in supporting the youth in this community. Um, and as soon as we know when and where that need could be helpful, um, I think you'll have people that would raise their hands for sure. Um, when it comes to monetary donations, because it seems to me, if I was to ask the question, what is one barrier between the, the use occupying the Bridge Center and using that facility, the one that I keep hearing about is, is the black mold, which is good for us to know, is do you have an estimate of how much money that needs to be raised for that um, service to come in to get the building up and running? Um, and is there a place that we can send checks or to a 501c3 that, that you fall up underneath so that the money can be raised? Yes, yeah, so as Jackie mentioned, uh, mentioned, she's a member of our board right now. We have a board that has, I think we have eight adults and three young people um, in, involved, and we will be co-chair, like co-chairing young people and an adult in, in that space. Um, so with that, we're working on our nonprofit status. So until we get our nonprofit status, we really can't take those donations. So um, it happened to be that Alex Omen was at a city council meeting when the youth presented and um, kind of st stepped in and said, hey, we'll be a fiscal host and, and take over the space until you all are able to um, get your nonprofit status in place. So right now, um, Faith has a, a separate fund um, acting as the fiscal host. Um, so Rotary asked us today, too, when we presented there, like, where can we send donations? And so Faith can take donations right now uh, on behalf of the Bridge Center. And, and that is all going. And as of now, we have a, a couple personal individual donations. We have a community donation. And we have a, f a, a few dollars that were left from the, the congregational church from their insurance. And so we have $17,000 raised um, to go towards the $40,000 estimate to um, remove all of that black mold. Um, so, so yeah, that really is kind of like, that's the, a barrier right now is just getting that started because once that happens, um, then we can get the outside renovation, um, which is landscaping. So we don't get water inside the building again to mold. Um, then we can start, um, yeah, making the inside, uh, creating the inside to work for us. So just, uh, just approximate values, and I know values can change from day to day, but approximately $23,000 is left to be raised um, so that the $40,000 for the removal of the black mold can be completed. Um, from just a simple question, but it, with that is if I or anyone writes a check to Faith Lutheran Church, in the memorandum we would just put the Bridge Center or the PR use? Okay, so either a check to faith, but in the memorandum, PR use, or the Bridge Center, 
um, will go to that exact account that's designated as a consolidation underneath a 501c3 until you have your own. Okay, awesome. That's super helpful to know and, and really helpful logistically for us um, to know where to send them and to make sure they get in the right hands um, and know that you're connected in that way so that anyone that's providing donations can get um, a tax write-off, uh, which I know is helpful for people for sure. And so uh, one of the qu a couple questions that others connected is the youth association connected to the high school in any way? other than through student participation? Sure. So that's a great question. And I, I will say that um, we specifically didn't start with the high school. And for the fact of, as we shared with the uh, community and Rotary Group today too, is schools are, so much is put on them. Um, there, there's, there's so much that has now ended up uh, under, you know, on the shoulders of an irresponsibility of, of schools. And what I pointed out today too, and in the previous slide, um, is that there is student data that says, hey communities, this is what we're saying we need from our communities. And you don't often find that, that data or that voice unless you go and search it out. I mean, like I said, Pelican's not unique. In in my job, we're working with other communities in the region where this is this is the same it's happening there too. And so right now we, we have not, you know, pulled the school in other than, to, you know, community ed. And we have Carrie Hoggard on our board too, in that rep representation in um, kind of supporting some of the events and activities that the youths have, have planned. Um, but our hopes are that, yeah, as we continue to move forward and, and build that physical space that we can combine some services um, so that support is is all around and, and young people feel that from their school and their community. One question, another question that we had was, is what age group does the Pelican Rapids youth um, target that is uh, for those who can participate? And is there any upcoming events that you can share about that are being planned and are in the works? Well, um, it kind of just was high schoolers coming together. Um, so, I mean, we want to welcome people, but we we don't want to have, not that we don't want to have, but we don't want, I'm just going to say, it, we don't want the adults to overtake because it's, it's, it's what we want to come together as the youths, as it is the youths, if that makes sense. <laughs> well said. That was that was good. Good. Well said. Um, as far as what I can tell, it's usually just high schoolers. Um, as Ariana said, we just we want a bunch of youth. Not that there's wrong with you know older adults. We very much appreciate our adults, and this one has been with us since day one and really helped us get to our goal. And we're almost there, and it's just a it's a really good feeling. So, not that we're saying that adults. Can, yeah, without her help. No worries, and, and, and I know the adults just want to have a safe space for you. So on the other side of the spectrum, so I'm guessing high school would be from 7th to 12th graders, would fit the ideal um, PR youth. It's helpful for parents such as myself to let my younger children know that wait until you're in 7th grade, because um, this will be an activity for you to be a part of. But when you are in 6th grade or younger, um, we will find other activities for you. And we know that we're just so new yet. Like this has just been us figuring things out in this age group. But there have been many conversations about like going and speaking with the sixth, the fifth and sixth graders and like, hey, this is what you have to look forward to. And and when that space opens up too, I mean, we know many middle schoolers don't have a place to go after school or they're waiting for their parents to be done with work. And there's, you know, they're not in high school activities yet. So it's going to be very important for that, that middle school age too to be involved with the youth center. And you may or may not know this question right away. Um, when the Bridge Center opens up and youth are utilizing, you know, maybe there's a room that has video games and a kitchen, is do you need any volunteer adult supervision or is that a part of, how does that logistically unfold? Or is there a need that we can in the community help with? We would love to have that space where we're just responsible for it, but I mean, you get some people who maybe aren't mature enough and will neglect it. So it would be, yeah, 
most likely we would definitely need volunteers. <laughs> um, I definitely think we would have volunteers, um, chaperones just to supervise. Um, as much as just, you know, as Ariana said, watch people. Yeah, don't overtake the advantage of it. And yeah, just have fun, but definitely supervision. Well, and I'll just add relationship building. Like we we hope to, and um, I think Frazee is a good model for this too. Like the volunteers that they that they have there, they um, are building relationships with the young people there. So they're not you know standing there with a clipboard and marking attendance down, or you know, or like who vandalized that or anything. Like it is it is a it is about building and developing strong relationships intergenerationally across cultures, um, across community groups just want it to be that safe home feeling like area so yeah for sure and going more from you mentioning Frazee and I don't know for sure is that more of a volunteer roles where there's adults would volunteer for that um, both. okay yeah, they, they have a system where they, it's very much both. okay because I wasn't sure if it was fully volunteer run or if it was be a model where like you mentioned both is there a paid position that would operate the center and just provide that that guidance and just check in um, that would be helpful it's just helpful for us to know kind of where can we help with um, in a way that doesn't get in the way doesn't try to participate but at the same time just facilitates a safe space um, one of the areas that you mentioned regarding a kitchen is would the inter interest be to stock the kitchen for students to eat in case they were hungry or in between events or in need or is it meant for community cooking together or both I didn't know if you had an idea of the direction that you'd be looking for that to go towards because uh, it would be helpful for us as volunteers to know how to help stock it I feel like a little bit of both like snacks here and there or you know yeah <laughs> um, we could definitely explore those options yeah. for sure um, I feel the majority of the time it would be the adults cooking for the people there. But, yeah, um, snacks wouldn't be so bad for the people there. Definitely a limit, though, so that it doesn't get abused. But, but, yeah. One thing that I've heard a few young people say is that, like, they want to cook also. And so maybe not just providing ready-made food or snacks, but also, like, having a pantry of ingredients where people can um, practice cooking. It's an interest that a lot of people have or they have something that they are just craving that day and just having that space for them available also. Well, those are all the questions that I have. Um, what I invite the opportunity for any of you to do is just any final comments um, connected to our conversation today. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time this evening to meet, to share about the organization, who you are, what you're doing, how you're doing it, um, and all the knowledge that you have, because the more you can help us help you, I think this would be a wonderful way for us to create that safe space um, that is an opportunity for you to gather as youth um, and have fun, but at the same time, just have meaningful opportunities. So thank you so much, uh, you know, as a parent and a leader in this community, um, we're all rooting for you. Uh, you know, Pelican Rapids does family really well. We're interested in supporting the youth as a need and being open and honest with us on what you're looking for and how can we shape that is extremely genuine, authentic, and useful um, for us saying that this is what we do need and that is not what we need at all. Um, just being straightforward and honest goes leaps and bounds. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your confidence. Thank you for um, being who you are and knowing that there's a need that is not only for your age now, um, but we, when you look past yourself and understanding that you are setting the foundation and framework for my children and for grandchildren connected to our congregation, um, it is appreciated by each and every one of us. I would like to throw a reverse card on that because I would say that we really do appreciate and thank everyone for, I mean, just coming together and realizing, oh, like actually listening to us, um, to be honest. But yeah, just a big thank you. 
Um, just as Ariana said, big thank you to you guys. Um, not shutting us out, you know, not shutting down the program. Um, one of the ways you guys could help us is spread the word. This is a thing that kids have wanted. And growing up, I've always wanted a community center. I mean, Perm has one, and that's just like it's such a cool thing to have. People can gather just for the fun of it. So, yeah, spread the word. I am going to give a huge shout out to Ariana and Eddie and all the other young people who I've met. I've been part of this for about four months now, and I am so impressed by you guys. You are just so thoughtful and creative and community minded and passionate and intelligent. And it's just so much fun to listen to what you guys think of and want to do in a community where you guys are going to graduate even in what one, two years. And hopefully this organization is going to help create, build this community into something that like you're excited to come back to and bring your families to come visit or live here again someday and just you guys are just super impressive and I am just in awe to be part of a board with you guys. My eyes are leaking. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, because all of that's real. Uh, and it's, it's so vulnerable and transparent and um, valuable in who you said it, Eric, to as like who we are as a community. And um, that's what makes my heart smile. And, uh, you know, uh, our leadership, one of my leadership goals and, and my mentor this, this year too is like building leadership capacity um, because no one can do this work on their own. Uh, and, and it is just like, and I am not my future. <laughs> you know, we are not, like our young people are our future. And if we're we need to open those spaces and and take the time to like what does your future look like and how can we come alongside you um in, in order to create that future because that future is our is like it's my kids it's my grandkids and, and beyond so um that's why my eyes leak <laughs> and that's why my heart smiles uh, because all of that is just that's what matters well thank you all and have a good night <laughs>